The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Vitruvian Man podcast, a podcast centered around self-mastery. I'm your host, Zach Shankin. As you can tell from the title of this episode, it is true. I did quit my full-time job, and today I wanted to explain a little bit about that, about what's been going on in my life. Um, I suppose the news is a bit dated. I'm recording this now in March, and that official change was turn of the new year, but I was getting stuff organized on my end, Um, wanted everything to be pretty final, and before I put that information out into the public, and I also debated whether I would share the specifics of what was going on behind the scenes, whether it mattered, but I think it's important to be authentic and share the journey so that people along their journey can learn from it, understand where I am, where I'm going, and then also give me a cool look back at you know, a decade down the line, I can look back at 23 year old me and see where I was on my journey and remember this is a pretty special moment. So wind the clock back. Uh, I graduate May, 2022 from university and I take a full-time engineering job at a medical device startup. Um, And I want to preface this with saying that like that position, the men that I worked with was absolutely high class, nothing to complain about, unbelievable men, um, great mentors. And I think it was a privilege to work with them. And I do believe it was like divinely aligned that I was at that position for that time, both physical location, what the job entailed, who I was working with, their support of what I was building with this in parallel and giving me the ability to build it and the support to do so. So if either James or Kamal are listening to this episode, you know that I'm eternally grateful for you guys and I'm a resource to you if you ever need me. So yeah, I was working that job full time and then building out the Vitruvian Man podcast as well as the program in parallel starting back in probably June time, I think was when I first really started actually putting stuff out there. So built it in parallel for about eight to 10 months And then in the back of my mind, the whole time thinking that thinking and knowing that I wanted to step away and be able to do my own thing, always have wanted to be an entrepreneur my entire life. A huge part of that was engendered from my dad who didn't necessarily choose that path. He stayed in his corporate job, but he always talked about how much one, he wanted to be an entrepreneur two how cool it was to be an entrepreneur. And so I always looked at that type of lifestyle a bit pedestalized and then some of the guys that I drew immense inspiration from through my life. I've talked about Steve Jobs before on this podcast, um, but him as a bit of an icon, a paragon of both achievement and what it means to chase your dreams. Part of that with the brand image and messaging behind Apple, but if you haven't heard it before, the commencement speech at Stanford that he gave towards the latter half of his career and in, you know, I believe it was within a year or two of him before he passed away. Unbelievable and something that I listened to on repeat since like middle school when it happened. And so a life-changing speech, if you haven't listened to it, I recommend you YouTube search it. It's like 11 minutes or 16 minutes or something and it's some of the most powerful words you can hear about following your passion, you know, immense powerful quotes come from that, like the stay hungry, stay foolish. Uh, I have it like written on my whiteboard behind me. So I always knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur, work for myself, chase the dream proverbially. And in my process of building out the business that I am now, I never really anticipated the moment that a lot of entrepreneurs refer to as like the burning of the boats. You give yourself no backup plan. You make some sort of leap. I always kind of imagined it would be a natural transition where you know, you build up whatever the side hustle quote unquote is to a place where it sustains you and it replaces your nine to five income, which I think is technically speaking the, the quote unquote right way to do it. I think it makes the most sense if you can kind of sustain that. And for the 
I felt that way for most of my time when I was working, but towards the end and when, when the decision became very crystallized in my mind, it became this space where there was a growing dissonance, like emotionally between what I was doing every single day and what I wanted to be doing every single day. And I think part of that is like burnout, you know, for like eight or nine months or, or like whatever burnout is, right? Um, fatigue from going eight or nine months, like working every morning before work, every night when I get home from work, all weekend, not really taking a ton of time to like fuck around, go out, do anything extra. Like I was really, really dialed in, still have been. And I, and I loved those moments. I mean, like the reason I was able to sustain it is because those moments outside of the work block, like the eight to five that I was working at my job were the moments that like really filled my cup because it's what I'm passionate about. It, it is like my dream and what I believe to be my purpose. So those weren't draining. It's just kind of the sustainedness of it. But when I looked at, you know, a time graph of what my full week looked like, I was still spending like half of my waking time at a job that wasn't my calling. And so the dissonance kind of emotionally became louder and louder. And I think it was also the universe kind of calling to me, telling me that it was my time. And I don't know, I haven't gotten too much into spirituality on this podcast, but for those that understand and have heard of the term synchronicity, but it's basically the idea that you start to notice patterns and as your intuition becomes more aligned and in tuned, you start to pick up on small things that are all telling a similar story. And it could be anything like it's really, really small stuff, typically like something somebody says or a video you see or a word that somebody in passing s says to you, or it could be something in nature, like two birds landing on a railing or whatever it is, but they start to, it's like the, the, you start to feel like the universe is telling a story to you and it becomes kind of undeniable. And there's things that can, I won't go into that specifically on this podcast, but you can align your intuition more and more and as you grow with your understanding of self, it becomes easier to be in tune with that. And my life and, you know, the business is built around self-mastery. So I'm pursuing the course of becoming my best self in parallel to building out what I'm doing and helping other men do the same. So that pursuit has never stopped. And so I have feel like over the last 10 months, I've become much more aligned with my personal intuition and was starting to experience some pretty remarkable synchronistic events as I moved closer and closer to where I ultimately made the decision and at risk of sounding like a madman to those that are on the rational, the scientific, the data-based side, which I obviously with my technical background in biomedical engineering and like having gone to a technical university, one of the best in the world, I get and have an appreciation for. Again, to those that are academic and critical and very scientifically based, I just ask that you you don't shut off these kind of ideas, whether they're from me or from somebody else, and just try to recognize that often they're saying the same truth, the same message, just with different words. So regardless of what you want to qualify it as, I will tell you the story of some of the things that felt highly synchronistic to myself leading up to ultimately my hard decision to you know, just pull the plug and step away with my full-time job. So I had played lacrosse in university. And so I played men's league over the summer and I'd always worn, I'd always worn a pendant necklace and I'd had the same one through most of university. It was a little circular pendant and on it, it had the Lord's prayer. Um, I was raised Christian and I also felt like it was very, the Lord's Prayer specifically is aligned with a lot of like the Stoic ideology and the Stoic philosophy that I am a huge proponent of. Excuse me, the Serenity Prayer, which is often used in the context of recovery, whether that be an addiction or whatever else. But for myself personally, it was aligned with kind of controlling the controllables, Stoicism, resilience, and Anyway, it goes like this. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And I still love that. Um, there's so much power in that simple prayer. It's an excellent one to pray regularly because it does, it calls, it calls for what you really need to live a life 
of control. You're asking for peace and serenity in the moment, courage to take actions on the things that you can, and the wisdom to discern between what is in and out of your control. So I loved it. But point being, men's league, I'm playing in the game and my chain gets snatched. I think I took a hit um, and somebody's helmet or something got caught in the chain and it broke. Lost it on the field, didn't notice till afterwards. So now that is moment number one in the chain of uh, synchronistic events, which we will return, chain, no pun intended, which we will return to. So I go looking for a new pendant necklace. I'm curious as to what I will wear. I think both with like the tattoos I choose, I'm very intentional with the mementos I keep. So I wanted it to mean something to me. I didn't want to just buy some chain off of Amazon to look cool. I wanted some sort of totem to represent this next stage of my life, but I didn't know what it would be. Fast forward and I'm experiencing more and more of this dissonance emotionally. I'm feeling very frustrated at work, not with the work or with the people I was working with, but just like, gosh, I feel, I was feeling more and more kind of anxious and like wanting to pour more into the business and just not having the time and feeling like I needed to do more. And so that was going on. And then a creator who I have been following on YouTube for a long time, Nathaniel Drew, excellent videos, very deep thinking. Nathaniel, if you hear this, I would love to come to Paris and be on your new podcast. Congrats on launching it. And up until recently, he hasn't had a podcast, but he's done YouTube videos. And he released this YouTube video about The Fool. And The Fool is a card in the tarot deck. For those unfamiliar, the tarot deck is kind of like this esoteric, aligned with like astrology and some of those types of things, which again, to my academics, don't don't write me off as, as a woo-woo guru. Just bear with me here. But... Anyway, he in this in his video was talking about how the fool is emblematic of himself and how he's felt like going through life and the tarot deck at large is the story of the fool, but it's also one of the cards. It is also represented in the jack of a traditional card deck. And the fool basically on the card in the image is kind of confidently stepping forward and in the image he's kind of like looking up to the sky and Below him, right in front of where he's stepping, is a cliffside. And the idea is that you're supposed to kind of, and the story of the fool is blissfully and positively, irrationally, optimistically stepping forward through into the world, ignorant to the perils that lie ahead, but you're willing to take the step forward. And it it is often a card that, you know, if you're doing a tarot card drawing or whatever, it's supposed to be emblematic of entrepreneurs taking the step into their new beginnings. And when I heard this and he was talking about his story specifically starting his YouTube channel and his whatever, but it really spoke to me specifically. I was like, bingo, that's what I want as not only the pendant, but it felt very true to myself. It's what I'm wearing now. If you are watching the video of this, but more than that, I think it was also representative of who I am. I've always felt like a bit of a jack of all trades, master of none in that I've always struggled to define or niche it was even in my decision for university you know i could write an essay just as well as i could do calculus so in the world that we live in of hyper specialization and everyone rewarding and encouraging you to just choose one thing and master it and become really really good at just one specific task i always had trouble with that because i didn't want to give up parts of myself and i feel like i'm uniquely maybe gifted or poised or given abilities in multiple realms. And so I've always sat at this sort of middle point. It's why my program is like holistic self-development because you can't just, in my opinion, develop yourself physically and then neglect your mindset and or neglect your spirit. I think it has to be all of you, the concept of becoming a Renaissance man, balanced and using the ability to become a lot and exacting the duty to do so. So I've always thought of myself as the Jack and I was like, holy shit, like the fool, the Jack, anyway, synchronistic moment. And so all of those things started happening in parallel and I started noticing these small signs, whatever it led to one of those nights where you're sitting in bed and your thoughts are racing and you just can't sleep. And it just came to me like, this is it. It was always like in the back of my mind thinking, where would be the time that I quit? Is it X, Y, and Z in the savings account? Is it X amount per month that I'm making with the business? And the truth is those could always be more and further down the line, right? You can always have more savings. You can always be making more. But if I believe in 
memento mori, which I close every podcast with and have tattooed on my arm. And the idea of wanting to live every single day as if it is my last, content with the things that I did. I said to myself, if I woke up tomorrow or went to bed tonight, having just done, you know, some random Wednesday at work, is that how I want to go out? Like, would I have lived that day to my highest self? And the answer was no. So I was like, okay, I have X amount of savings. It'll give me X amount of months of runway. If I don't make any money between that time, like I'm going to do it. And so (laughs) told my family to which they had their reaction. And from there, it was just letting my bosses know and, and giving them the timeline of me stepping away come the turn of the new year. So Since January, I've been doing the damn thing, living the dream, as they say proverbially, and it's been really incredible. There's been hard weeks, ups, downs emotionally for sure, but to be able to say that at 23, the dream that I've always had for myself, I'm living it now, is pretty incredible, and there's always the risk of quote-unquote failure. I don't know that there is a defined point where I will know I will have made it, you know, air quotes to made it or feel like everything is, is stable. Like there is inherent risk in everything, but I looked at it as there is more risk in not trying because I didn't want to optimize for an outcome that I didn't care to, to experience said more plainly, like I don't want to play a game if the prize is something I don't want. And I looked at the standard life of nine to five, like whatever the job is, like I just am somebody who like the dissonance is loud enough that I was going to take some action on it. And I know I I true, I believe that the human spirit isn't necessarily meant to be like caged in a job at all, but plenty of people can and do make that their living. So it isn't to pass judgment on the way of life, but for myself specifically, like it would have killed me internally, like my soul. I would have lived on. I would have been fine. I would have still been able to raise a family and all all of the standard things that I still plan to do with my life. But I would have been on my deathbed with regret for things I didn't do. And I didn't want to get there, especially being so young too. I think I can be more quote unquote risk prone. Again, risk can be assessed in different ways. And I, I would argue that the risk is far greater to not chase your dreams because like When you think about it, like if the result is not what you want, do you care to win the game? Do you care to even play it? So I was just looking for a way to get into a game that I cared about as soon as possible. And the opportunity presented itself slash I made it. You could argue that those are one and the same. And that was kind of my mindset. And I am a collector of, of quotes. I love writing and reading and seeing how language can communicate ideas and there's far better people at it than I that have come and gone Steve Jobs being one of them who I referenced and there are a few others here that I wanted to read that I've come across over the years and kept as far as my backing for wanting to chase um, the entrepreneurial dream and more or less if we zoom out from entrepreneurship live a life of intentional design and on my own terms. So I'm going to read a few of these that have have had a profound impact on me and hopefully to those listening can potentially have a high impact on you. These are really, really beautiful words. So the first is what's referred to as the Holstein Manifesto. From what I understand of the Holstein Manifesto, it was written by a group of guys when they decided to all quit their jobs and try to build a little business together. They basically wrote this as their their manifesto for the, for the company. They kind of hung it on the wall. It blew up because they posted it online and ultimately spread like wildfire from there. But they wrote this and I think it's really, really cool. This is your life. Do what you love and do it often. If you don't like something, change it. If you don't like your job, quit. If you don't have enough time, stop watching TV. If you're looking for the love of your life, stop. They'll be waiting for you when you start doing the things that you love. Stop overanalyzing. Life is simple. All emotions are beautiful. When you eat, appreciate every last bite. Open your mind, arms, and heart to new things and new people. 
We are united in our differences. Ask the next person you see what their passion is and share your inspiring dream with them. Travel often. Getting lost will help you find yourself. Some opportunities only come once. Seize them. Life is about the people you meet and the things you create with them, so go out and start creating. Life is short. Live your dream and share your passion. And, I mean, I I get, like, reading it out, I, I still get chills because... And now, especially because I I am doing some semblance of that. I'm <laughs> I'm sharing myself with the world, my thoughts with the world, my words with the world, and trying my best to share my passion. And anytime I get messages from you guys that listen, or people I run across in the DMs, or like a story, or swipe up on something, whatever, it's amazing to hear the positive impact I've had, even at such a small little scale. And I really don't think it's because I'm special. I think it's because I was brave. Like that is the only separator is that I just put it out there. Like, and the reason I say that too, is because when I end up talking to people, they all have these incredible stories and passions to share. They just haven't started sharing yet. And there's all these walls put up around us. And more importantly, that we put ourselves into mentally to stop us from doing that. Oh, that's what they do like that. I'm not confident enough to do that. Or that's really outgoing of them, but I don't have, I don't have the confidence that they do, or, you know, I couldn't handle the judgment or I don't have the time to do it, or I'm busy with this, or maybe I'll start later. Like those are all these self-imposed walls and you put yourself in this tiny little mental prison and it's really dark in there. And ultimately your, your light is only lighting that tiny room, but it could light a cathedral if you were to open it up to the world. So realistically, at like a very high level, I look at my purpose or what I want to do with my life, and it's just to help people realize their potential. And to me, within the framework of what I'm building, it's it's men to become the best version of themselves, and it starts very physically. Like I think you have to take domain and control over your body, but what is the point of all that is to learn that you are a master of your reality. Like when you take a decision and then execute on a plan and then you see physical reality change, i.e. your body, then it's like, okay, what's next? And if you're building your mind and your spirit in parallel, you really start to to see the world differently and it opens up things to an amazing level. And so if anyone listens to this, take the time to assess what you are, are passionate about and then begin to share it with the world and don't worry about monetizing or turning it into a side hustle just start sharing what you think and who you are with the world and the answers will be given to you whether it be by someone who messages you and says hey i love that thing you put up do you sell that or hey i'm working on something similar would you like to help me like your effort and energy will be rewarded you just have to take the leap of faith to start putting yourself out there and like the fear of judgment, like it's all an illusion. Like if someone actually reaches out and gives you hate, like they're doing you a favor because they're telling you they shouldn't be in your life or your circle in the first place. So you can like block them, unfollow, walk away, whatever it is like that. And that is few and far between the most people will either sit quietly and watch and you don't know the effect you're having on those people specifically, right? You're quietly inspiring them. And then one day they reach out years down the line and they're like, Thank you so much for sharing this. Like I never had the courage to reach out to you, but X, Y, Z. That's already happened to me, right? Like 10 months in, it's like, hey, I've been following for 10 months. Keep going. Uh, I finally, like I wanted to message you because it's been really cool. And and so you're not going to get all the praise you want in day one. And that's all ego satisfaction in the first place. Don't do it for the applause. Just do it to share who you are and the rewards will be boundless. And then to circle back to the idea of playing a game for a prize that you don't even want in the first place, there's a really good quote that I've saved from Bill Burr, phenomenal comedian. And I think this is from one of his specials, but one of my other friends who I think is also very entrepreneurially minded, Jake, I don't know. I don't don't think he listens to this, but he actually had like a poster of this on his wall. That wasn't the first place I had seen it, but I definitely added it to my list after seeing it like up on his wall. But it talks about, especially to those in the audience that are young, but I really don't think that there is any limit on chasing your dreams. Like 
I work with guys in their mid to late thirties all the way down to like current university students. And whether you wake up and realize you want to chase your dreams at 18 or 48, like you literally can only live life one day at a time. So you, you both have equal opportunity. The future is an illusion for the 18 year old as much as it is an illusion for the 48 year old. So live your life immediately. And now the second you wake up, chase it with passion and, and violence and speed and, and smile the whole way doing it. Like, I don't know, like I'm, I'm sitting here smiling for those that aren't watching. And to me, it's like, I just get so excited when I see people and meet people that are on fire and passionate about what they're doing. Because I think that is God or source or universe. Like that is the purpose for us being here. Like the stuff that lights you up, like that's how you were meant to experience this life to the highest degree. So I just want more people to do it. And I think that's how the world gets better. But with this Bill Burr quote, it says, or he says, realize that sleeping on a futon when you're 30 is not the worst thing. You know what's worse? Sleeping in a king bed next to a wife you're not really in love with, but for some reason you married, you got a couple kids, and you have a job you hate. You'll be laying there fantasizing about sleeping on a futon. There's no risk when you go after a dream. There's a tremendous amount of risk to playing it safe. And I think it's plainly stated. It's definitely a very uh, damning quote because I think uh, the path of least resistance is extremely tempting, especially in the short term. The illusion or the pitch of safety and the right bet or taking your time, all of those things, whether it's investment strategies or trying to build the business of your dreams or whatever the quote unquote dream is that you want to chase traveling the world, becoming an athlete, putting yourself out there, making music. Like it could be anything like the illusion is safety. They tell you, they'll tell you that that'll guarantee that you have X, Y, and Z. And there are structures in place to make it really, really hard to chase your dream. Like the fun and exciting part about what I'm building is like doing like speaking to cool people, creating the content, writing, being on a bit more of an artist. But as far as like a business owner's perspective, I'm doing like back end with like tax season and registering an, a, a business and like wrapping an, an LLC into an S corp and like all the unglamorous shit. And like the government literally is built to keep you from doing it. Like all of these structures, it, it is harder to do it than to not do it. And so those are the little roadblocks that you have to kind of step over to get to the place where you're doing what you want. And those are points of resistance which you have to push through to get to this space of you living the dream or the paradise or whatever. But those are the same people and system that'll tell you like, you need to save your money and not invest it in your business because if you put away extra money year after year, like you'll have just enough that when you get to 65, you can live the dream that you've always wanted and like have a really really safe retirement but like by then you've neglected your body and you've missed 35 years 40 years of your life and at 65 you have to go try to live those experiences but like your body can't keep up with that your body won't be like you won't be able to sleep on a futon or an air mattress in chile and then the next day wake up and eat a single protein bar and hike to the top of a mountain with your friends like your your body can't follow the dream like it can when you're young and there's a there's balance in everything i'm not saying just go recklessly spend your money on bottles at the club every weekend like you will be broken destitute like you don't have to be ignorant but i think money spent on your dream trying to exact a life you want for yourself is far better spent than sitting in the bank earning money for the banks which are evil institutions in the first place which we won't get into on this this episode but the risk of course is that you wake up down the line having lived a life with no life in it. I I talked, uh, I think it was on the purpose episode of this podcast on the story of the fisherman, but like it's so emblematic as far as the entrepreneurial dream. It's like, make sure that you optimize to build your current day to how you want it to be as soon as you can, as soon as it's feasible. Don't wait till you reach X amount of money per month or X amount of money saved in the bank to live or give yourself permission to be happy. Don't like defer to this like artificial agreed upon retirement age to be willing to live in a place that you want, do the things that you want on the day to day. You're playing to somebody else's rules and that quote unquote somebody else, like those are people that are profiting the whole way through off of compliance, your compliance to the structure that they've set up. 
if your perfect day looks like waking up, walking out on the beach and fishing all day, and you just make enough money to get the fish and then feed the, feed yourself, feed, feed the ones you love, but you're already living the life that you want. Like you don't need to go build the fishing business and then charter a bunch of boats and then build it to a certain amount of mo- money per month just to circle back to the place where you wake up, you go fishing, you bring fish home for the family and you eat. You have the ability to be living the dream right now. It, it is so much more attainable than you think and than is purported, like it's much, much closer and it doesn't have to be six figures a month. It's it's really close. You're probably already making more than you need with your current salary. So it's more about how to get your time back. But anyway, that's the, the Bill Burr quote that I think is really powerful. And then another one from Charles Bukowski, an amazing, amazing writer talking about going all in. If you're going to try, go all the way. Otherwise, don't even start. This could mean losing girlfriends, wives, relatives, jobs, and maybe even your mind. It could mean not eating for three or four days. It could mean freezing on a park bench. It could mean jail. It could mean derision. It could mean mockery, isolation. Isolation is the gift. All the others are the test of your endurance, of how much you really want it. And you'll do it, despite rejection and the worst odds. And it will be better than anything else you could ever imagine. If you're going to try, go all the way. There is no other feeling like that. You will be alone with the gods, and the nights will flame with fire. You will ride life straight to perfect laughter. And it's the only good fight there is. And I know that that is very intense and dramatic for a 23-year-old kid trying to build an internet business. But I am a bit of a romantic. I love beautiful language. And so that speaks to me a lot because you do feel a tremendous amount of isolation. You know, I talked earlier about like, go put yourself out there. And I believe it, I'm doing it. But like, yeah, you're going to get put on an island. People are going to talk shit behind your back. People are going to look at you differently. You're going to alienate family members. Like there's no, there's no easy way. But what I can say for certain is the alternative of quiet desperation to me, looks far more miserable because you end up in a place where you're just left with helplessness because we'll never be able to change the past. And I don't want to look back over 50, 60 years and be helpless to the years that I threw away not doing what I wanted, as opposed to toiling and taking the pain up front to at least be satisfied with the man I see in the mirror, the choices I made, and knowing that I tried. Um, The intro and exit of this podcast is snippets from the man in the arena quote from Theodore Roosevelt, which I will close today out with as well. And I want to read it in full because it's probably one of the most pertinent and powerful quotes I have in my life. And I think it is consummate to this conversation. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to the deeds, who knows the great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end triumph of high achievement who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. It, it's a, it gets me every time. Cold and timid souls who know neither victory nor defeat. That's what this podcast is about. That's what my program is about. That's what I want to structure my life around is being a man in the arena. I am prepared to get beaten up by life. I'm prepared to be the kid who was naive and blindly ignorant. I'm prepared to be the fool, to step over the cliff, and I'm prepared to fall because I refuse to be a cold and timid soul who lived in quiet desperation, who didn't dare to try. And it is my belief in self, in the world, that if I put forth a positive message and put forth my highest self, that everything will work out. 
better than I can imagine, and I believe deeply that the same is true for you listening. Whoever you are, wherever you are, whenever you hear this, the only way to fail is to quit. So just pick something and don't stop doing it. Pick something that you could do for the rest of your life. Don't optimize for an outcome with short-term gain. Don't try to make the quick buck. Don't try to set up your life for some sort of optimized tax structure, payoff plan, bundle, retirement package, defer this, defer that. Like, fuck that. Like, you literally live life one day at a time. The most you can access ever is right now. The richest man on earth who I guess is Elon again, he only has the ability to live one day at a time. No amount of money he could amass gives him the past back or the future ahead of time. So if you can live like a king today, live like a king today. Whether that means relocating to somewhere where your dollar is higher leveraged, whether that means taking a lower paying job, but you work half the time, whether that means... Just restructuring your day so that you consume less garbage and you spend more time reading or training or with your partner or giving back to your community or making something with your hands, making art, writing. My challenge or call to action after this podcast is write out your perfect day. Turn this off, go somewhere quiet, ideally outside if the weather is nice, and sit still and Imagine the best day if I could give you all the money you could ever desire, take away the restriction of having to go make money. What would that day look like? And maybe making money is part of your passion. Like it's a fun game, business and entrepreneurship, and money is the scoreboard. I'm competitive. So I have goals regarding that. So that would probably be part of maybe my perfect day, but maybe it's not for you. Maybe it's your whole day. There is only your answer that matters but you need to know what it looks like and then once you have it out from the time you would wake up to the time you would go to bed where you want to wake up where you want to go to bed do you wake up next to someone do you go to bed with someone who are they what do you do during the day who do you spend it with what is the food you eat once you have it all out in great detail you can look at it and i promise you it's not that far away It's not that unattainable. And the goal isn't to snap your fingers and do it tomorrow. The goal is to start subbing in piece by piece until six months, eight months, nine months down the line. You're living pretty damn close to your perfect day. And it only took a few months of intentional direction. It's just not that far away. Like, let me be somewhat of the living testament. I wrote down what my perfect day looked like 10 months ago. And working for myself was a component of that. And in 10 months of consistent effort, consistent vision, consistency of mindset, I'm here. I'm doing it. I get to spend my day how I want on my terms. And you can do the same. That's all for today's episode. I appreciate every single one of you contributing to my ability to do this. Share if you found this valuable. Follow on Twitter at ZDSCH. E-N-K-E-N. Follow on Instagram at Vitruvian Gentleman. Message me your thoughts. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on this message or anything else that I talk about. Message me questions in case you want me to talk about a specific subject or just want to pick my brain. I am spending a lot of time online these days in building out this project, so I'm available a lot. Thank you, thank you, thank you for everything. Excited to see where the next 10 months take us. Remember, Your time and attention are your most valuable resources. So thank you for spending them with me. Memento Mori, and I'll talk to you in the next episode of the Vitruvian Man Podcast. And if he fails, at least fails while daring great, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls No, neither victory nor defeat.